guys, I am here with Major, a Yorkshire Terrier, and he is in need of a brush out, so let's get busy. It's very important to use an anti-static conditioning spray when you are brushing out a dog. For a long coat Yorkie, I do use a pen brush. The pen brush doesn't break hair and it has long deep pins where it will penetrate deep into the coat and brush the hair without creating static and without having any drag and pull or tug on the coat. So we just work evenly all around the dog, brushing over the coat just to break it up and to locate the tangles, figure out where we are, uh, where the trouble spots are. This will lay the coat down and separate all the hair for us. Once I get all the way around the dog, getting all the hair broken up, laid down, and separated, then I will locate any tangles that I need to work on. As you are brushing, try to keep your wrist straight and carry all the way through the bottom, um, going with long, even strokes. It's good to not try to tease the hair or whip the hair up and break it. You want to get every inch of the dog's body, one end to the other. Getting under the tail, under the neck, behind the ears, up under the arms. So now he looks pretty well brushed, doesn't he? And so many times when pet parents bring their dogs in, they'll say, but I just brushed him. He couldn't possibly have any tangles. And many times we feel that they don't. We feel like we did a really good job, but you have to use a comb to check and see if you got the tangles out. And as you can see here, we have found one. So what I do is I isolate that tangle and get all the good hair away from it and then start breaking it with my fingers. Not necessarily breaking the hair, but breaking the mat apart, reducing the size of the mat and trying to actually save hair by doing it this way rather than getting a slicker brush or a mat breaker. It's better just to pick it apart with your fingers. And once you get it picked so far apart, you can take your pin brush and start pick, pick, picking with the pin brush and then pulling it with your fingers. And then you can go back and pick it with your pin brush again, if necessary. Then you would always go back in and double check the area with your comb. So we're going to check it and we found more. So we're going to isolate that one. and repeat the process, picking it apart with our fingers. And you do not stop when you are doing this. You want to complete the job at least that same day. If you have to put the dog up and go back later, it's fine. But that same day, you want to be sure to get a comb from one end of the dog to the other. And as you can see, I already thoroughly brushed him. So it's not so much the brushing as it is checking with the comb. And the comb is never used to pull out mats. It's only used to check for mats. It's used to straighten the hair to set the part and to be a checking tool to see if your brushing is finished. And when you cannot get a comb through the hair, your brushing is not finished. So the comb is the most important tool. It's all about the comb, guys. So now we're gonna check again, and we have this outer leg combed through a bowl. So this outer leg is done. This front leg appears to be done. We will turn him and 
separate this hair again and pick up our checking tool and uh-oh, we have found another tangle. Isolating it. Here you can see it. And pick, pick, pick it with our fingers, breaking it apart. Pick with the brush. And you notice I am not picking up a slicker brush to get the, these knots out of a long coat. If this were a shorter coat, say three inches or less, yes, I would be tempted to use a slicker. But because this is a long, full, silky coat, a slicker would absolutely be the wrong tool. This coat type and this length of coat is just like human hair and any loose hair that naturally comes out, the pin brush would be sufficient, guys. No slicker brush on a coat this long, this silky, ever. And, you know, sometimes you'll see me recommend the long pin slicker brush if we are working on a thicker coat, say a cotton or a Shih Tzu, but this, silky fine hair is fragile and the pin brush on coats three inches or longer is the tool to be used. So we're just continuing on locating any mats, picking them apart with our fingers, pick, pick, picking with the pin brush and going back and checking with the comb. That's a good boy. You notice I'm remisting it with the leave on conditioner. This reduces static and gives the comb a slide through the coat. So proper brushing includes combing. And if you're going to wash a coat like this, this entire process must be done the same day as the bath. It cannot be put off to the following day. It has to be the same day. We're not done yet. You know, it's funny how the brush was just gliding over his coat like everything was fine. And you notice when I'm picking at these knots with the brush, I'm not using the entirety of the brush. I'm just using a corner because you don't need the whole brush to drag over that. It would pull on the coat more, so just pick, pick, picking with the piece of the brush is much better. So we're continuing to work around the dog. Looks like we're able to get a comb through most of them at this point. Gently gliding the comb over the coat. Now we'll start working on the face. taking the ouchless band out of his hair, checking the top knot, making sure we can get the comb and brush through the top knot. That's a good boy. Oh, there's another one.
So using the same process, we're breaking it apart. And you can see how much gentler of a process it is when you're using your fingers to pull the mat apart. These aren't really even mats, these are more tangles, but they will quickly turn into mats if you don't do this entire process. Yorkies with this much coat need to have this process done every five days. It cannot go longer than five days. If I have my own dog with coat this long, which I've had several, I wash and blow dry the dog every five days and do the full brush and comb out at that time. The reason why I prefer to do the complete wash and blow dry at the time that I do my brush and comb out is because, especially with the boys, they tend to get quite sticky underneath. They get, um, the ends of the coat get dry and it's better in my opinion if I'm going to spend this much time brushing and combing a dog to do it with clean coat. I feel that I have much less breakage, that the coat is uh, better conditioned, there's less static, there's less snapping to the coat. I just feel it's worth my time to wash and condition, brush and comb every five days. It really helps me to maintain an absolutely beautiful coat. So to get to the underside, I train dogs to lay on their back. To get a dog to lay on their back, typically you will just lay them over just as I did with him. And if they're fussy, you can just scratch their chest and encourage them to stay in place. This takes a little bit of training, but it's not hard at all to do. So because we keep full belly hair on males like this that are growing excessive coat, we do need to make sure that the hair on their sheath stays tangle free. I do not recommend using a belly band on a boy in full coat. A belly band is kind of like a male dog diaper, which prevents them from lifting their leg in the house. So he's got a few tangles around his scrotum there. We need to make sure those are out. You can't leave any tangles in the coat at all. You must get them all out at the time of the brush and comb. Otherwise they'll just get worse and become more and more difficult. In certain areas, it is more difficult to break the knots apart with your fingers and you end up having to use your brush and comb more. That would be true on the lower legs, up under the arms, certain areas where it's really difficult to, to pick apart the mat or the tangle. I like laying dogs on their back to do this because you have complete access to the underside of the dog, every little nook and cranny. Be sure to praise them, tell them how wonderful they're doing when they are on their back like this because they're in a vulnerable position. Just telling him he's a wonderful boy. And he is. I give him the release word, which is okay, before I allow him to get up. Now we're setting the part. It is important to set the part on these dogs that keep parted hair. It trains the hair to stay in the part. And by setting your part, it does keep the hair where it should be, which keeps the hair tangle free. This final comb through keeps all the hair going where it's supposed to. 
It's not just for looks. It does help to prevent knotting. And we will tie his top knot back up and get him all ready to go home. He is all brushed out. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss a single upload. Please share this video wherever you can, and we'll see you next time, guys. Bye.